Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and here we are in the beautiful incoming light of summer solstice 2020. This is the early part of the light and I thought I would read you a blog that I wrote um, to do with a diet that I hope will diminish the harshness of COVID-like symptoms. For those of you that develop COVID-19 symptoms or are diagnosed positive for the coronavirus and have the symptoms, I have a hint that may help diminish the harshness of the symptoms. On 4 March 2020, I began to develop physical symptoms I had never experienced before. At first, I felt a thrumming in my gastrointestinal tract, and then a thrumming in other parts of my body. It felt as if my gut brain had sensed something awful in the air, and that my body was somehow concocting remedies for the threat it sensed, whether within my body or merely in the air, I could not tell. A day or so thereafter, I felt a few sharp pinprick aches randomly here and there in my body. The next day, I felt body chills coursing through my body, but I had no fever. In the ensuing days, I felt great fatigue such that all I wanted to do was sleep for days. There was a half day of gastrointestinal tract uneasiness. Then whatever it was settled as a moderate cold in the bronchial tubes and lungs that produced lots of mucus or phlegm. A few days later I found I could get out of bed and walk a few steps without very great fatigue. After that each day was better. I was on the mend. Little by little, I began walking in the neighborhood. Then I went on to moderate mountain hiking. Then I had a symptom that really worried me. I fell asleep one night and then woke up to my upper airway popping closed, slightly stuck together with mucus, it seemed. Then, as I, as I inhaled, it popped open. As to my recollection, I had never had such a symptom before. I thought I had best try to find out what was up with that. I stopped by one of the local hospitals and they said my symptoms did not fit their description of COVID-19. They thought I might have symptoms of anxiety. They said they were getting lots of cases of anxious people coming to the hospital. People who thought they had COVID-19, but they said did not have it. So they sent me home. On the other side of the coin, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a great many people in the United States have died this year of causes not diagnosed as COVID-19. Of the 99,000 excess deaths that the CDC predicts for 2020, about 32,300 deaths are not diagnosed as COVID-19. It seems to me that people with mild COVID-19 symptoms may be going to the doctor or to the hospital and then diagnosed as anxious, then going home and dying at home of respiratory failure due to COVID. I feel this theory is worth investigation and hope the hospitals here in the United States will consider it. For those for whom Western medicine has no remedy, I have this to offer. During the course of my March 2020 illness, 
I found that eating certain foods caused an immediate adverse reaction. It was as if, in the space of a few minutes, alarm bells were ringing all over my body. I would go from feeling not too good, but manageable symptoms, to desperate physical distress in but a moment. For me, some of the foods that caused this adverse reaction were mucus-forming foods such as wheat flour or dairy, animal protein, fish, chicken, or red meat, solid foods of any kind, refined sugars, alcohol, and foods with chemicals in them. For me, at first I switched to small amounts of water daily, and that alone. Then a little later, what I could eat was a small amount of broth from boiled or steamed vegetables. Then, after a week or so, I could eat a tablespoon or so of watered-down bean or lentil soup with tender, well-cooked vegetables mixed in. Days later, I could eat half a cup of soup. Thus, through very careful diet, I was able to alleviate the symptoms of the COVID-like illness I had. Today, more than three months after onset of COVID-like symptoms, my diet is more like what it used to be normal for me. But I find I want to eat much less food and I still prefer to, to avoid sweets, wheat flour, and dairy products. My physical endurance is back to normal. I am masked, but out and about Los Angeles and the surrounding mountains daily. I have slightly more mucus or phlegm production by the lungs and bronchial tubes than is normal. My feeling is that, that this may be a good thing. I may still be encountering coronavirus in the air here in Los Angeles, but I may have developed immunity to the virus, and the mucus or phlegm from the lungs may be proof that my body is now well able to quell the virus. I have been following the World Health Organization's daily situation reports on COVID. I could not but be amazed at the differences in the numbers of cases and deaths from COVID from nation to nation. It occurs to me that the diet of the peoples of some nations may promote alleviation of COVID-like symptoms. Especially, I wonder if the diet of the peoples of some nations may alleviate mucus or phlegm production during pneumonia and thus help prevent COVID deaths in those countries? I know we here in the West think less of diet as medicine than do the peoples of the developing countries of the world. That may be because we have universal health care and the benefits of Western medicine. In the case of COVID-like symptoms, it might be helpful for the people of the United States to turn to diet as medicine. Maybe we could take a look at the diet of people in countries that have been less affected by COVID than has been the United States. As well, I hope my explanation of a diet that worked for me will be of interest and even maybe of help to those who have coronavirus-like symptoms in the coming year. I hope everyone will be able to avoid the worst of the COVID-like symptoms through whatever diet works for them, through rest if fatigue sets in, and through God's graceful kindness in answer to our prayers.